Now, our next conversation this morning is one that would interest business owners in Nigeria. Taxpayers and businesses can now heave a sigh of relief as the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, has granted full waiver on accumulated penalties and interest for outstanding tax liabilities. It is commonplace for the tax agency to impose penalties and interests for failure by companies uh, that fail to fulfill their tax obligation as stipulated in extant tax laws. The chairman of the Revenue Service, Zach Adedeji, made the decision known in a notice personally signed by him and made available to newsmen through his special advisor of, uh, on media, Dari Adekombi. The letter reads thus, and of course it's going to be on um, your screen in a bit. Uh, it says, um, this has been one of the best news heard by business owners in the land. Uh, but of course, you know, we will be joined by... Uh, a business analyst, uh, Bolahon Lojide, to express um, his thoughts on this uh, this news. Good morning, Mr. Lojide. Yeah, good morning. Nice to be on the program. Great to have good you on you. the program. Tell us what this means. Uh, n not very many people expect, you know, that in, in, in today's um, economic realities in Nigeria, where the government should be looking out for ways to make money from every, you know, way, shape or form, nobody would expect that the FRS will be giving tax waivers to defaulters. So, what exactly do you see happening here? What has what has played out here? Okay, um, this is not exactly tax waiver. That's, uh, I think it's important to start from that point. Um, what we're seeing uh, is a, a, a waiver of penalty and interest on taxes within a window of a period. Uh, one of the most important considerations in taxation is the capacity of the taxpayer to pay. So um, it, it, you can easily see that when you relate it to the individual taxes or payee, in which it is believed that people should pay as they earn. The more you earn, the more you are able to pay. So the capacity to pay is a very important part. And this is what I believe the FIRS is looking at from the perspective of corporations. We are in a year where corporations have had to, uh, or businesses have had to deal with issues of diesel price increase, uh, a, a PMS price increase, foreign exchange unification that has led to the slide of the Naira. So businesses are generally under pressure. So if there's anything you can do in the space of encouraging people to at least pay in view of the fact that their capacity to pay has been diminished by the economic circumstances. Um, it will encourage them to at least pay the taxes that they owe while you waive the penalties and interest within a window of time. Um, it, it, it also applies in accounting, actually, where you encourage your debtors to pay by giving them a discount. You say, okay, if you pay within 30 days, I give you 5% discount on the amount you are owing me. That is the kind of thought that has gone into this. All right, this is um, great news for a lot of businesses who have been struggling with the, you know, the economic realities that we're currently presented with. So, yes, it looks like great news. But do you think that this would in any way um, impact our ease of doing business uh, ratings? Do you think that this has in any way impacted our position positively on the ease of doing business ratings here in Nigeria? I, I don't think the direct effect is on the ease of uh, doing business uh, because, as I don't forget, it's a very temporary window. If you don't do it within that window, if you don't pay your taxes within that window, the interest and penalty will be restored back for you to, uh, to carry on with. So, uh, essentially, it is more of Let's get as much money as we can get in now. Uh, so the present value of money is important, or what we call the time value of money. A hundred naira today is better than a hundred naira next week. So if the government can use this to drive, to incentivize, actually an incentive, to incentivize the taxpayer to bring the money now within the next uh, one month or thereabout then you enjoy the time value of money because you are receiving that money now. And for the businesses, they can cast away the burden. Some of these penalties and interest will be actually huge. In certain instances where delay has been too long, you have instances in which 
the penalty and the interest are actually more than the tax. So it is a great relief for them, and I'm just hoping that they will take advantage. So I'd like you to also quickly explain, you know, the details of this. So when we say that there's a waiver on the accumulated um, interest, uh, just to confirm that there is going to be an actual payment still. What is this payment? Is it the principal amount that you know initially accrued? If you can give us some, you know, sort of explanation as to how this how this plays out. Okay. Um, your, your taxes may be a hundred naira. You're supposed to have paid it, let's say, in March this year or, or in April. You did not pay this uh, uh, 100, 100,000. So if you did not pay when you're supposed to pay, there's a penalty. <laughs> so let's say the penalty is 10%. It means that you are going to pay, when you are going to pay, you will pay that 100,000 that you already owe. And then you'll be required to pay the 10,000 penalty that has been slammed on it. Then if you still don't go ahead to pay, there is an interest that accumulates for every day for which that the tax remains outstanding. So over the over the period, you might have a situation in which another 30 naira has piled up on top of this money that you did not pay. So the actual taxes you were owing was 100,000. There was a penalty of 10,000, and there has been interest of 30,000 that has accumulated. You are required to pay 140,000. So what the government is saying now is that within a window of time, I will waive that 40,000, that penalty and interest, and I will allow you to pay just the 100,000 tax, which was the original amount you were owing. The others were penalty, were, were uh, sanctioned because you did not pay in due time. Yeah, all right. Um, we would also like to maybe, hopefully, the FIRS also details what happens if they still don't pay, even after these, um, you know, penal or these uh, penalties have been waived. But, you know, I, I also want to talk about the FIRS. In 2022, they declared 10 point, uh, I think 10.1 trillion Naira um, as uh, income for 2022. Um, talk a little bit more about how Nigeria can also take advantage of you know these figures uh, we currently have a 27.5 trillion naira budget firs is declaring 10 trillion you know as income is there ways that we maybe can also um increase our tax bracket or widen the tax bracket and figure out ways that you know the firs can be a you know huge income spinner for the, the federal government okay uh, this is a very interesting uh, uh discussion you have brought up for me, the starting point for driving taxes is for the people who, who have the responsibility for using these taxes to show a high level of responsibility. What do I mean by that? People want to see that the taxes that they already paid is being used to make their life better. Your tax is working for you in terms of what the decision makers are applying the taxes to. So that is a good starting point. Then the second level is to say that taxes that are due are being collected. So there is collection efficiency. Um, if you look at the individual taxes, for example, personal, or personal income taxes, you have a situation in which um, some organization would deduct this pay as you went from the staff, but they will not pay it to the government. They won't remit it. So, Issues around collection efficiency, both for corporate taxes and other categories of taxes, need to improve. Then the third layer is to bring in more people into the tax net. There are still a lot of people who are not paying taxes. As a matter of fact, what some people are paying is extortion, not taxes. So you see some people walk into your shop, you are a trader, and they harass you, and you look into your till, and you give them 5000 that 5,000 doesn't enter the government coffers. So what you have paid is extortion, not taxation. So we need to get more people into that tax net formally, and, and we can use all this issue of NIN, BVN, and all the rest of it. We get more people into the net and get them to start paying. Don't forget the foundation where I started from. People want to see how you are applying their taxes to better their lives, and that is what will incentivize them to want to give them their money. Then the last step, the fourth level, is where you now look at the adequacy of the percentages of these taxes. Are there tax rates 
that we need to increase. Are they the one we need to lower? Are they the, you know? So you now go into the uh, tax rate and begin to review and revise. You also need to make tax payments or, or tax charges simpler. This is one of the things that the, uh, there's a committee uh, uh, led by, uh, I've forgotten the gentleman's name from PWC before now, um, is, is doing. When you have multiplicity of taxes, 50 different taxes, 40 different taxes, it brings confusion and it impedes the efficiency of administration of those taxes. So simplification of the tax process, making it easy for people to pay, making it uh, uh, streamline, not, not 1,001 taxes that we currently have right now, will go a long way to drive taxation as a major source of income for Nigeria. And you're absolutely right that the way and manner in which the taxpayers' money is used or in which citizens can see the tax being used would be a great incentive to encourage them to pay their taxes. We see this in uh, developed, more developed countries where, yes, there's a complaint about high taxation uh, in the UK and in the US, for example, but you would see that the citizens can see what their taxpayers, what their money is being used for. Would you say that that's the situation here in Nigeria? Can Nigerians... Are Nigerians excited to pay tax because they see what the taxpayers' money is doing? Also, are there fears that this might lead, lead to a further um, liabilities, tax li liabilities on the part of business owners who feel that maybe in the nearest future the gov government would uh, bring up another waiver? Oh, well, it is very... I, I don't think we're quite there as far as... Uh, getting Nigerians excited about how the existing taxes are ever being uh, 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 administered. Uh, a very good example might be the volume of people that were at COP28 uh, for this year. Uh, Nigeria was said to have the third largest contingent uh, to that uh, uh, event. And we must be asking ourselves, who is funding this? What you will finally find out by the time you dig deep is that several ministries and departments and agencies of government I've sent delegates on the wallet of the government. That is on my wallet. I am a taxpayer. So I pay taxes and we use it to send 1,000 or whatever the number is to uh, attend an event for which a simple committee who harmonize our position and present it at that event. Maybe the president can, presidency can lead a, a, a little team to, 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 to that event. But that wasn't what we, what we saw. So... People must um, see how this money is being spent. But a situation in which Nigerians are still, you know, we provide our own security, we fix our own roads, uh, our schools, you know, those things don't speak to the right level of application of tax that Nigerians would like to see. He has to improve, and it can indeed be improved. I remember that in this state, some years ago, during the days of uh, a particular governor, um, someone had, um, I, I, I had a traffic offense and somebody wanted to uh, ask me to pay a side money. I said, no, I am going to pay it to the government because that particular administration was really impactful. And I said, look, I will give my taxes to this government because I can see what they are doing. That is the way we need to go. That is the way we need to make Nigerians feel that, oh, I see what this government is doing in this area, in this area, in this area. Let me also support them with my taxes to ensure that they can do more. It is a contract, though it is not written anywhere, that I will pay you my taxes, you will use my taxes to better my life. If you are not doing that, it's a breach of contract. Yeah, all right. The new FIR as, um, you know, uh, chairperson or chairman, um, Zaka Didiji, of course, has a lot of work. Um, in his hands. Uh, the new administration itself um, has a lot of work. They're, I remember that when they came in, one of the fears was that uh, they will, um, you know, use the Lagos model, which is to increase taxation, and that would be one of the challenges Nigerians would face. But, you know, I, I hope that they also understand exactly how to go about it so it doesn't become uh, neck-breaking for the average Nigerian. Um, so quickly share with us, you know, this is going my, my last question to you. Um, what you would expect, you know, now we're not just talking about federal taxes. Remember that there's also going to be state taxes, you know, that people would pay. Um, what would, would you expect from the tax bodies going forward, both at the federal level and on the state level? Lagos State, of course, you know, has its consumption tax and this tax and that tax. 
Um, is, there, is there ways that you think that these things can also be fine-tuned on a state level uh, to improve the lives of, uh, of uh, citizens? Well, there, there is a huge tax assignment out there, um, which is being uh, chaired by uh, the gentleman that I mentioned earlier. I don't know why his name is chaired from my head now. Uh, and it is not just about federal taxes. It is harmonization of the tax regime in then types. So some of what will come out of that assignment will also impact on, on the state. Streamlining taxes is a critical part of changing or improving the, the ease of doing business in an environment. And that ease of doing business affects the state as well. So part of it will involve certain reviews of maybe rates. Part of it will involve even legislation issues where laws might have to be passed. Um, some rates, some taxes that have been duplicated, we will have to deal with tax, tax duplication. And you know, you have what you call the joint tax board. Uh, and and the, the part of the role of that board is also to see the, the harmonization of all this uh, taxation issue. So I believe that by the time that committee's job is done, we expect to see, um, I, would say, I would say, major reforms of our taxation system in entirety, not just the federal tax, but the state taxes. All right. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning on Breakfast Central. We we'll look forward to having you again. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Just to quickly mention to our viewers this morning, it's um, uh, the um, new or the law basically is on or before the 31st, uh, the 31st of, of December. December. Yeah, so, so it's not it's yeah. not a waiver that is you know indefinite to whenever you decide to pay. And the implication of that is, if by the 31st of December you haven't paid the initial sum, and you know of course they're waiving away the interest and the liabilities. Yes. If you haven't paid the initial sum by the 1st of January 2024, it reverts to what it was pre this waiver. That is inclusive yes. of every interest that has accrued and every and liability. Penalties. So yes. the great thing is, yes, it's bringing quick money into the coffers of the federal government you know, as quickly as possible, and hopefully individuals and businesses who I, within... I know there was a time Yabo Ojo was talking about her um, having tax issues with Lagos State Government. I'm hoping that this in a way favors her. I don't know the exact details of what that is. So the number of individuals and businesses who have been slammed with yeah. very hefty... Tax, um, budgets, just like you know. Mr. Lujide said, you know, there, there are even uh, yes, situations where the penalties even are now bigger than exactly. You know, the, the, um, so those those hefty tax fines, we hope yes. that this would help them get away from them, absolutely, and that they can make use of the time. So now, between now and the 31st of December, go pay your tax fine.